Hi everyone, my name is Timothy and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this is episode 2 of MMUCU podcast and uh, today we get to speak about wealth. And one of the main goals is for us to understand and develop uh, the correct perspective on this subject. Alright. Um, in quite a number of setups today, it's very difficult to talk about wealth, especially in the church community and i think we can just begin on this note now we have what is called uh, the prosperity gospel and uh, many don't even know what that is you know if if, uh, if i speak about healing for a whole year people will be okay with that if i speak about uh, salvation uh, for the same time people will be okay with that but if i speak about money for a few sundays people begin calling you the prosperity preacher is it the will of god for the church to prosper is it the will of god for his people to prosper financially well we are again something that we don't actually know because people are very lazy to study the scriptures now i do understand that um, we have so many fake preachers who have taken advantage of the subject of uh, finances and therefore they have managed to rob so many people but that does not mean that uh, the whole subject of prosperity is evil or should not be taught and understood by God's people now when you you know when you're speaking about the gospel you're speaking of the good news and the good news does not come from com- comprise of uh, one specific message it's it's a coming together of many different messages we have the message of healing we have the message of uh, forgiveness we, we talk about leadership the list is endless and among the things that are included in the good news is prosperity you see the bible says in the book of deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18 that but remember the lord your god for it is he that gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant which he swore to your ancestors as it is today moses is telling the children of israel you shall remember the lord your god for it is he that gives you the power the ability to produce wealth now this is the will of god in fact he does not just wish uh, to give us money he wishes to give us the grace the ability that produces wealth all the time so god so much desires that his people prosper financially so it is the will of god and it is his perfect wish for you that you prosper financially as you have prospered uh, spiritually so this is an okay subject to speak about to study about and to teach about in church a lot of people have not managed to achieve breakthrough in this area because they have a very um, incorrect perspective of the same and one of the big reasons is because um, finances have been so much misrepresented or mistaught by so many people who have not taken time to know the heart of God concerning this. So even before we get to how to get a more breakthrough in finances, I want us to first of all understand uh, the scriptural truths about money. Okay, so uh, we begin by looking at the book of Matthew chapter six, verse twenty-four. Jesus said, "No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or." you will be devoted to the one and despise the other you cannot serve both god and money <clears throat> now in this verse jesus begins by saying no one can serve two masters and then he ends by saying you cannot serve both god and money that means the two masters that jesus spoke about were god and money and one of the things uh the the first thing you have to understand about money is that money is a master by itself in fact this is the only uh, place in scriptures where i find jesus comparing god's influence to something to something else Uh, actually many people like comparing uh the devil to god many say that the devil is the opposite of god well that is not accurate if we were to compare the devil with anyone else, we can compare him to uh, Archangel Michael. He's not the opposite of God because he was actually created by God. But for Jesus to actually compare God's influence and money, money's influence, that tells us we should treat 
the subject of finances with a lot of precaution. Now Jesus says no one can serve two masters. And then he says you cannot serve both God and money. Money is a master by itself. And every time you are pursuing money, you ought to understand that you are pursuing a master. And the thing about masters, when a master comes into your space, he does not come to listen. He does not come to submit himself to you. He comes to command. He comes to set his own standards. And therefore, money is one of the things that we should pursue with a lot, with a lot of caution. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 that above all else guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. King James says keep thy heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. We have to guard our hearts and one of the things that should not dwell in our hearts is money. In fact money should only be another commodity in the hands of a believer. Money will have dominion in the space that we have allowed it to come into we are the temple of the holy spirit and just like the temple in the old testament um, we we ought to partition ourselves the temple had uh, the outer courts there was the holy place and there was the holy of holies anyone from any nation could could, could come at the outer courts but only his rights could uh, enter into the holy place and then when you came to the holy of holies that was a very very special place where only one person entered once an year and if we are the temples of the holy spirit we ought to partition our lives in such a way so that we have the space of god that is never intruded by anyone or anything else and the most unfortunate thing is that people have allowed money to intrude into their innermost chambers. And therefore, what happens when money becomes the key thing in your heart? Then remember, this, money is a master. It becomes the key thing in your life. Money should not be the drive of a believer's life. Money should not be the only key thing that wakes you up every single day. Money is just another commodity. In fact, money is, as we are going to be seen as we progress, money is a result of so many things working together. Therefore, if our drive, if our hope, if all our meditations are based on money, then we are on the wrong track. Jesus said you cannot serve this master and serve the other on the same capacity. And therefore, money should have nothing to do with a believer's character. I'm just saying these things so that you can gauge uh, what money is to you. Money should have nothing to do with your character because your character is only shaped or rather should only be shaped by the fruit of the Holy Spirit that is growing in you every single day. That means whether you have money or not, joy should always abide. Some people get very disgusting when they don't have money. They talk, they talk anyhowly to anyone. They don't care what they say and you can tell this guy is lacking money. The moment they have money, they are smiling, they are laughing with you. That, that tells you money has actually become a master in this person's life. Our spirituality should not be guided by money. It has nothing to do with money. And every time we wake up every day to go and work and ensure that we have more money in our name, we ought to make sure we are pursuing a master. A master that wants to take control of every aspect of our lives. Remember, this is the difference between us and the non-believers. That our joy, that our lives flow from the life of God, not from money. And therefore the question is, what is money to you? Where is money placed in your life? Do you ever debate whether it's God or money? These are the questions that we have to ask ourselves so that we know where we are. The Bible says, examine yourself. That you still stand in the faith. You can examine yourself actually. If money was to be taken away from your life, what else would you have left to work for you? What else can work for you apart from the money that you have? What else, what else gives you motivation apart from the cash flow in your life? You know, someone said some people are so poor that all they have is money. And that is so true. And therefore, we as God's children we should be careful in pursuit of money. Because I know we are hardworking people who are doing their best to ensure that we have the best life possible. But every time you are pursuing money, we should, you should pursue money while guarding your heart, while taking care of the condition of your heart. Because if your heart is the wellspring of all the issues in your life, 
if if your heart is a wellspring of all your issues then when money is the king in your heart then definitely all issues in your life revolve about money and you know god cannot fight for space with another master once he notices you're bringing another master he will just leave quietly our lives should not revolve around money all the time no there's more to life than money there's more to life than the cash flow all right number two jesus said in the same verse um chapter 6 of verse 24 from the book of matthew he said either you will hate the one and love the other or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other now money in your hands can make you either despise god or hate god that's why you have to be careful when accumulating more and more wealth money can make you do one of these two things and therefore the the second point we get to understand about money is that money amplifies the true heart condition and this is so true money in your hands will display the hidden picture of your heart and actually sometimes god will send money our way just to show us our true heart conditions not to necessarily answer to our needs because if everyone would get all the money they wish to have people would react differently some would never be seen anywhere close to godly cultures you know we like saying money changes people a more accurate way would be money amplifies the heart condition because it is easier to fake character when your resources are limited it is it is very easy to portray a false character when you have limited resources when people are in lack when people are in want when people are in pain they are always crying out to god they are always dedicating and f- uh, time for prayer fasting you know going for fellowship because they feel they need a higher intervention remember the book of ecclesiastes says money is the answer to everything once people have a means to get to that which they are also depending on god to do for them there's a possibility that they will leave this god because they have now developed their own means so god wishes for us to work on our character on our heart before we get more money because once we get more money in our lives we will no longer be able to hide what proceeds in the inner chambers of our hearts therefore if i were you i would work fast on my character before working on finances guys remember our relationship with god should have nothing to do with money and if god can be sure that your faith in him is purely based on your love for him then he has no issue releasing to you all the money you want number three we ought to understand that money does not define the value of your life the value of your life is never defined by the money and the wealth you have accumulated the book of luke chapter 12 verse 16 says and he said to them watch out uh actually let's begin from verse 15 no verse 14 someone that that thing actually someone in the crowd said to him teacher tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me but jesus replied man who appointed me judge or executor between you and he said to them watch out and guard yourselves against every form of greed for one's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions nlt says life is not measured by how much you own you know how god values life is completely opposite from how the world values life the people who are very famous in, in our days and the people who are very much honored are the people who have a lot of cash that works here on earth but we ought to understand this is this is not how heaven defines value and so as you continue to trust god and work hard and work diligently to ensure that you have more money in your life please never forget this and understand this your value is not in the money affiliated to you your worth is not attached in any way to the money in your accounts and in fact uh because of time we not read it but you can read uh, from verse 16 um, of the book of luke chapter 12 jesus gave a story of this gentleman who saved all his life and then at his old age he said 
I will create bigger stores and I will bring in the harvest and then I will tell my heart uh, eat and marry because you have more than enough and God said to this man you fool your soul is required today let's not lie to ourselves let's not have the wrong mentality of cash and therefore the question is why are you pursuing more money why are you working so diligently to ensure that you get more cash in your life could you possibly be thinking that your value will be higher when you have more cash that's not the case and understanding this will really help you not to think of yourself highly than you should our value before God is not based on the cash that we have. No, don't get me wrong. God wishes us to be rich. However, our, our, our value is in no way attached to our wealth. That's why I began by saying wealth should just be another commodity in the hands of a believer. It should not be the thing that motivates you, that strengthens you every day. Our value is in our identity in God, not in the wealth we have. We are the apple of God's eye. That is what should give you strength. That we are a chosen generation. Such things, your identity should, should, should be what detects your value, not what you have accumulated. And, and God wants us to understand this before we get to accumulate more wealth. When we understand this, it will be easier for us to value everyone's life, including those who are way below us. We shall treat them with honor because we understand just because we are more rich than them does not mean we are more valuable than them. And this will also help us not to idolize the rich people and not to idolize money itself. You see, when you have more money but you understand this is not, this is not what defines you, then you will not treat it so highly. And it will be easier for you to love God as you did in your days of how beginnings because you completely understand that your value does not increase as your wealth increases. Never consider yourself more important because there is more cash flow. Jesus said, be careful. Life is not measured by how much you own. The legacy we have in God is not based on how much you own. So your life, whether you have a lot of money or you have very little of it, that has nothing to do with your value. Amen. Point number four, Proverbs 22 verse 7. The Bible says, The rich rule over the poor and the borrower is slave to the lender. Money elevates your status here on earth. Remember, it is not what defines your value. However, when you have money, your status will be always elevated. The more money you have, the higher your status will be here on earth. Why? Because money can do so many things. And money can give us an an easier time to live and a more peaceful time because money is what works in um, in a lot of cultures the principle of the rich ruling over the poor works in all nations in all cultures this is why you need to hate and despise poverty because as long as you are on the head of the poor people your voice will always be the last one to be heard. Your say you will always be the last one to be heard. Your suggestions will be the last ones to be considered because the rich rule over the poor. In any setting of life, as long as you are considered rich, you will be having more priorities than the poor. And therefore there are honors and favors and privileges that we, we shall not need to pray about and fast about when we have money. Money will make our lives easier here on earth. Therefore it is important for us to pray and trust God for more financial breakthrough. Because we shall have an, such an easier time to live. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 15 says, There was a small city with few men. A mighty king came against it and surrounded it and built large siege rams against it. Now a poor wise man was found in the city and he saved the city by his wisdom. Yet no one remembered the, that poor man. This is, this is a trend of poverty. This was a city that was, uh, that was about to be destroyed but there was such a wise man who saved the whole city but there was no legacy for him left behind. Why? Because he was poor. Poor people are not remembered. They do great things. No one considers them. Rich people do very tiny things, but they are credited over everything. Poverty is not the portion for God's people. As long as you are poor, you shall do great things in your life. No one will notice them. Why? Because the rich rule over the poor. This is a principle that applies to the born again, to the witches, to the robbers, anyone who is a human. This applies. 
as long as you are considered rich in any setting or any culture then you shall be given the upper hand that's why god needs you to be financially blessed so that you shall become his voice in settings that are full of people who are full of pride we can do very little when we are poor we can go only far enough when you are poor therefore money will open doors for you money will really elevate your status and what a beautiful picture when you become very rich and at the same time become such god fearing people it becomes easier for us to influence cultures it becomes easier for us to 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 preach the gospel in such a simpler way a lot of people despise church and they despise god because all the christians they know in their lives they are poor people as long as we consider you poor we shall give you the last opportunity that's that's a bitter truth i know i'm not just speaking of about about poverty in 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 money we can also consider you poor in uh, wisdom or poor in suggestions poor in words poor in character as long as the aspect of poverty is attached to you then you will be considered the last at some point people will opt to do without than having you number 5 money is such a determinant for more spiritual providence money is a factor that is considered before god says okay he can have more spiritual breakthrough Now the book of Luke chapter 16 verse 10 Jesus said whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much and whoever is dishonest with very little will be will also be dishonest with much then he said in verse 11 so if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth who will entrust you with true riches first of all we get that money is not considered to be among the true riches and that is important for us to to, to understand And Jesus is saying if we have not been faithful if we have not been trusted with worldly wealth that is money then God will not trust us with the true riches there are higher things than money and the true riches are the things that come from him things like grace things like favor things like power things there are so many things that are higher than money but Jesus is asking this question if you have not been trusted with money then who will trust you with the higher things it would surprise you but i can assure you that sometimes god will check your budget before he approves more grace in your life you know how you treat your money is the same way you should treat your power and your authority and your position people who are careless with money are also very much careless with power and money can be the one thing that god checks and he says if this man has wasted everything i have brought his way he will also waste the people i want him to meet the levels i want to take him in and if we are careless with the money that we have in our lives then we can forget about other things that god wishes to give us remember what you have is not all there is there's more to receive every single day jesus said give us today our daily bread there is bread enough for every single day but jesus said one of the things that assures god of our faithfulness with the true riches is actually how we use our worldly wealth if god sees and observes your faithfulness in the money that he has already given you then he can be sure that whatever else he shall place in your hands hmm, will bear the intended fruits because we remember we began by saying money is a master and therefore if god can be sure that we have mastered this master then he can place in our hands anything else that he has planned for us Therefore let's be wise, let's be cautious, let's be ready for more breakthrough financially. At the same time, let us have the right perspective. We will continue in this subject in the next podcast. God bless you. See ya.